welcome to the Autocar Show. Now, it's a hot and happening segment that we have here, the luxury compacts. Quite a few cars launched, quite a few more to come. But with the petrol and diesel prices in our country really flip-flopping around, people are still veering towards the diesel power plants. That's why we have these three with the diesel hearts lined up here today. We're going to pit them against each other, see which one wins and why. But before that, let's take a closer look at them. Well, before we actually get them out on the road, let's take a look at some key facts about these cars. How expensive really are they? Whilst we are talking about luxury level cars, they are hatchbacks at the end of the day. So let's find out how much can they really fit in. And of course, let's take a look at the diesel hearts that power them. So now you know the A-Class is the most value. The Volvo offers the most equipment and has the best power figures. But before we take them out on the road to see how it all translates, let's take a look at these cars. Original Mini Cooper is an eye-catcher. The Countryman, well, it retains the iconic styling, but I think the four doors and a little stretched look take away from that original cuteness. The A-Class impressed one and all when it was launched with its sassy styling, and even in this bunch, it's the one that looks good. The Volvo, though stylish on its own, comes across as a little reserved and seems a bit understated in comparison here. Well, what can I say? This interior, really the most funky with those retro-looking circular dials and of course very cockpit-like feel with all these knobs here and here. Of course, the handbrake lever that feels like I could almost take off in this. Quality as well, top-notch. There's no doubt that the Mini Countryman is the one that will impress you with its interior. The massive analog speedometer that wraps itself around a high-resolution multimedia screen manages to feel retro and futuristic at the same time. The aircraft-like toggle switches on the roof and dash and in fact everything just feels like a fantasy land on its own. Undoubtedly, it's the interior that will blow you away. The A-Class has a modern cabin that feels as well-built as an E-Class. We especially like the SLS AMG style triple aircon vents, the tablet-like MMI that looks Gen X and the sculpted steering with the checkered dials that all give it a sporty, youthful air. The Volvo has its typical floating console, rich strokes of brushed aluminium and a really impressive build quality. But the rest of the interior has a very IKEA-like functional design. So, if it's pizzazz you're looking for, apart from the funky LED illuminated gear selector, you won't find it here. Well, it's time to get these babies out on the road despite the weather gods behaving in a really threatening manner. Now, with the Volvo having the best figures, it's the car I decided to get into first. The beauty about this engine is the moment you tap the throttle, there is no lag. No delay from the 6-speed transmission and it just leaps to life. The V40 has a really nice, punchy, torquey engine and nipping in and out of traffic or going flat out on a highway, you can really have fun with this one because put your foot down and you will find power. 
The only thing that really lets it down at times is the fact that the gearbox, when you put your foot flat down, tends to hunt a bit for the gears before it gets the right one and gets a move on. Other than that, the V40 engine will really make you smile, be it getting off the line at a signal or overtaking on a highway. Or simply just tucking into empty spaces in traffic. It makes a great companion. Step hard on the gas and it's always ready to jump forward. And the 0 to 100 comes up in just 8.6 seconds and I think that speaks for itself. It's a quick car that's fun to drive. Now, when we showed you the power figures earlier, the A-Class and the Countryman really didn't look too far apart from one another. The 0-100s to are pretty close, but out on the road, where the A-Class feels very linear and a tad boring, the Countryman still has a spring in its step. Taps on the throttle make it leap to life in a much more enthusiastic manner than the A-Class for sure. And in the 20-80 to slog, it does better, making it the more drivable of the two. However, where the A-Class did edge ahead was the fact that its engine felt the smoothest of the lot. But overall, it was the V40 that felt most refined, with the car being better insulated against all external noises. Now, the Mini is the one you'll have the most fun chucking around the corners because the steering is just that very Mini. It's direct, points the car exactly where you want it to go. The tail tends to step out a little nicely around the corners. But the downside of the steering that gives you this amazing feedback on a nice twisty windy road is that in the city it tends to feel a little heavy, especially when you're in traffic or when you're parking. V40 steering doesn't feel too great at centre, but it gets better weighted as you go around the corners. And but for a hint of roll, the V40 can be fun to drive too. You can push it without feeling unsafe around the corners. And even in a straight line at high three-digit speeds, it feels stable. class had impressed us with its body control and grip when we first drove it and it continues to do so. You can carry speed through the corners or cruise comfortably down the expressway with equal ease. So when it comes down to handling, it's a pretty close call. Now all the most people buying the luxury hatch will be wanting to be behind the wheel, there are a few that will take the back seat. The A-Class, the most legroom, especially with these scooped out seats, it makes way for a lot of space. And I think with this flat central portion, the third passenger would probably be the most comfortable sitting in this seat. But of course, you have this high central tunnel, so it's not all that great. And rear seat is quite low, squab is quite short, so there's lack of under thigh support. Visibility to the front is impaired by this huge headrest, and unless I lean to one side, I pretty much can't see anything in front. Given the low profile tyres, I was quite surprised with the ride quality. Seat not quite as comfortable as the others, but the ride quality is better than the rest. It's flat, it's composed, it's got a supple edge to it. And it just doesn't let the bumps and potholes filter through to you. However, the fact that you do hear the suspension in the back seat takes a little away from all that comfort. Now coming to the Countryman, it's the first four-door Mini, which invited us into its back seats. But at best, this back seat is for two people. The third person would have to be very tiny or it would be a very tight squeeze. Other than that, the legroom isn't too bad, but if the driver sets his seat low, your feet could get squeezed. 
As for the ride quality, the suspension is set up stiff to make the car feel sporty. And there are those low-profile run-flat tyres with their stiff sides that prevent them from tackling the Indian roads in even a half-decent manner. Now, the Mini's ride is a little bit hard and firm, especially at low speeds. It tends to let the bumps, potholes, all the gravel on the road filter through. But it does improve as you get a little bit quicker. And it does pretty well over the bigger bumps. In fact, it filters them far better than it does the smaller ones. On the whole, it was the V40 that dispatched our roads well. Nifty cup holder if you don't have a third passenger and an armrest. And the seats themselves, really comfortable. Good under thigh support, good lumbar support, and the recline angle, just perfect. I think very comfortable for a long journey. The V40's ride is quite amazing. It's flat, it's composed, and be it low speed or high speed, it's got this supple edge over the bumps that just make it very distant from the passenger in the car. The fuel efficiency figures that are claimed are Well, despite the weather playing games with us, we've had a chance to put these cars through their paces and here's what we think. Mini Countrymen, fun to drive, iconic, funky interiors, but it's not quite as practical as it should be. Ride quality on our roads lets it down and the fact that it's quite compact on the inside. The Mercedes A-Class is just that, the Mercedes A-Class. It's got that top-notch interior, it's got that great ride quality. However, it does have some shortcomings. Performance really lacking compared to the other two. And of course, the fact that when you're in the car, that road noise filters through, not letting it feel as quite luxury as it should. It's also not as well equipped as the other two, but you have to remember that's because it's a whole 5 lakh less than the other two. Now, when you consider that huge price difference, its shortcomings seem just that, a little short. They don't matter so much and it becomes quite a value for money package. However, if you're not really bothered about the price tag and you want something that does it all the best, then you have to look towards the V40. It's got performance, it's got refinement, it's got good quality interiors, it's got all the equipment you want. In fact, it's the one that just does it all in a package the best. In between the time we shot this story and before it made it to air, the BMW 1 Series was launched. And a full Comparo would really be incomplete without mentioning it. The 1 Series Diesel 118D Sportline Plus comes at a price tag of 29.9 lakh X showroom. And this is the top-end version, which is the one that comes with all the bells and whistles which would make it comparable here. This version has the leather electric sports seats, auto xenon lamps, rain sensing wipers and sunroof amongst other things. It produces 141 bhp and 32.6 kgm of torque, which puts it right up there with the lot in this Comparo. It's definitely fun to drive. The engine pulls in a strong and linear manner and you're never short on power. And in fact, it's actually loads of fun to drive. Dynamically, it's the most involving too. And despite the run flat tyres, it rides well. The thing is that you pay quite a premium to get the top end version and the lower variants feel very pared down. Also, it's not really the best looking car in this comparison. But honestly, if I had the money and it didn't matter, I'd pick it over the V40 for some simple reasons. The fact that the BMW network is wider spread, service will be easier accessible, resale will be better, and more than anything else, just the way it involves you when you drive.